Philippians. Anybody tell me what part this is going to be? Nine. Man, I'm telling you what. But this is part nine of identity theft. This has been the longest series I've ever taught and probably the most powerful and the most important. What I've been doing, of course, naturally, if nine, this is the ninth one, so I, I can't go back to all of it. Uh, but what, what I am doing is I'm showing you some things in the Bible that as God's people, we have had our identity stolen from us. And God's identity that he gave us when he, well, you know, if you look in, in Genesis chapter 1, you know, the Bible says, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. The likeness is talking about this is what God looks like, two arms, two legs, things of this nature. But when he said, let us create man in our image, he's talking about that creative power. How many of you know God's not lacking in anything? Amen? Amen. How many of y'all know God's not sick? Amen. How many of y'all know God's not broke? Amen. How many of y'all know God's not addicted to anything? Amen? Amen? So you know what? When he says, let us make man in our image, that's what he's referring to. But what's happened here is it's just taken these generations after generations after generations of being beaten down by religion, being beaten down by the world system, of being beaten down because... Maybe your skin's not white enough. Maybe you weren't born on the right side of the track. Maybe you don't have as much money as somebody else. And all of a sudden, we have held up in esteem what the world thinks of us, what religion thinks of us, what people think of us, and we have forgotten all about what God thinks of us. And I'm here to tell you today that God has made us in his image. Amen? Amen. Let, let, I tell you what... Um, Give me my three, get my four guys up here. Y'all remember when I did that little deal? Y'all, yeah, uh, come, come on up, come on up. Uh, Chris, Tommy, and I, I, I'm, I did this once before, and I'm going to do this again. Larry, was it, Tony, wasn't you in on this? Oh, is this it? Yeah, this is it. Okay. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get very elementary here, but I, I'm going to show you something here. In, in Thessalonians, it talks about that we are a trinity that we have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. Amen? All right, so watch this with me. I'm going I'm to go down this real, real, real shortly right here. All right, here's my spirit man right here. Here's my soul. Here's my body. And this is the Holy Spirit. Okay, now, when God, see, when God made man, he said, let us make man in our image. Isn't that what he said? All right, so this right here, is, is, is the trinity that God made us in. Now, when Adam was in the Garden of Eden, does not the Bible say that Adam walked in the cool of the day with God? He walked with God. He talked with God. He had intimacy with God. Adam was all that he could ever be. And what happened to Adam was, is Adam didn't know who he was. That's why the devil stole his identity. And the devil said to him, the day that thou eat of the fruit of that tree, thou shalt be like God. If Adam only knew, he couldn't have been any more like God than what he already was. But he was tricked. And once again, if you'll notice that the devil tried the same thing with Jesus when, it, when Jesus was in the wilderness, he said to Jesus, he said, If thou be the Son of God, turn that stone into bread. What is he talking about, if thou be? He knows that's the Son of God. He's been with him for eons and eons. But what he's trying to see, people, you've got to understand here, the devil got no new tricks. He's been doing the same old mess all these thousands of years, and that's what he's done to you today. He's robbed you of your identity. So what happened in the Garden of Eden, this right here was perfect. God never intended for the body to run the show. God intended for your spirit man to run the show. But in today's religion, you hardly ever hear about the spirit man. They'll tell you about the soul. They'll tell you about the body, but they never teach you about this. And some of those that do get on the right side of the ditch, some get on the left side of the ditch. Some of us, you know, all they want to do is run and shout and jerk and fall out. And you know what? I ain't got nothing against that. As long as it's real and by the word of God and the Holy Spirit's moving. But it's been my experience that most of that's been monkey see, monkey do. Most of that's been, let me show you how holy I am. 
let me, let me speak in tongues so I can show everybody just how sanctified I am. A lot of that is just self-righteousness. Now watch this with me because when Adam fell from the Garden of Eden and was cast out, uh, you three guys walk over here now. Come right over here. Now they're out of the Garden of Eden. God has cast them out. But I want you to notice something. They are still in the image of God and the likeness of God. They're just not in the perfect place where God had intended for them to be. See, God told them where the gold was. He told them where the silver was. How many of y'all know Adam never knew what sickness was? And I'm here to tell you, Adam's mind and Eve's mind was extremely developed. They were the most intelligent people that ever walked the face of this earth. There was nothing lacking, nothing missing in them. But the day they were cast out of the Garden of Eden, God did not take his image away from them. He just took them out of the perfect place where he had put them. And see, this today sometimes represents where some of us are. Because now what's happened to us is because we've been beat up by religion, because we've been beat up by the world system, now all of a sudden, instead of having the spirit man lead the show, we now got this body leading the show. This body right here wants to drink. This body right here wants some drugs. This body right here wants to do all the things that it wants to do. But because the spirit man is weak, then all of a sudden now we've got the body running the show. And then we've got the soul man right here. It's kind of like a computer. The soul man remembers that's where your mind and your will and your emotions are. So right now it's stored. Every memory that this thing has ever done is stuck right here. So now what's happening here is, is we now got the body. I, I, I need a little seriousness in this house. I ain't preaching this to be funny. Amen? So now what we've got going on here is we got the body here going on, running the show. And that's what got us all in trouble because now we're letting the body tell us what to do. God never intended for this body to be your boss. God intended for this spirit man to be your boss. God intended for the spirit man to dominate things. But without the spirit, see, this is why God sent Christ down here to die for our sins. And so we, we can have the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit that God said. You remember when Jesus said, when I go away, I will send you a comforter? All right, now in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come and go as needed. But since Jesus ascended to the throne after the resurrection, the Holy Spirit now is available. So now what happens, see, if you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and your Savior, this spirit man right here is wide open. He's open. He, he can be demonically uh, uh, possessed. The devil can have his way with this any time he wants to because this thing is without God. It is a spirit man. It is still powerful, but it has no knowledge. So all of a sudden, when you accept Christ as your Lord and your Savior, come here, Holy Spirit. Now grab the spirit man by the arm. Now all of a sudden, this is what happens. When you get born again, you now have the Holy Spirit locking arms with your spirit man. And once again, religion is not telling you about this. Religion says, well, come to church, get baptized, give your money, sing in the choir, and you'll be okay. Honey, that's works. That is works. And that's how come religion is so... That's how come religion has so much condemnation upon people. They want to, they wanna, have you ever noticed that religion wants to measure sin? Well, this is a little sin, this is a medium sin, oh, this is a big sin. No, honey, sin, sin. Amen. Amen? So watch this with me now, because now all of a sudden, if you've accepted Christ, it's not over with. Because you know what? This body still wants to do what it wants to do. This memory still remembers all the things, all the parties, all the drunks, all the things they used to do. This memory is still there, and this memory is tempting this body. But now you've got something here. You've got the Holy Spirit of God. How many of y'all know God's not going to give you half of this? God's not going to give you a percentage of this. When you got, listen, when you got saved, you got all God's best. Everything that God's got, you got. But here's the deal. Now what we got to do, we got to educate this. That's why Romans 12, 2 says, renew your mind by the word of God daily. Because if you don't renew your mind, what happens is you got these old memories 
these old thoughts which tempts this, and this is so used to being in charge that what happens here is this is, this is born again, this is saved, this is on its way to heaven, but this wants to drink. This wants some crack. This wants some heroin. This wants to do the things that it used to do. But all of a sudden, and we wonder why I got saved, but yet I'm still doing the things I used to do. Because you haven't educated your, spirit, your soul, man, with your spirit. This is why the Bible says that you should not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. This is where you grow. You grow in the house of God. But here, once again, now stay with me. You can't expect this by just coming to church on Sunday and Wednesday night. I think you eat your, you feed your physical body more than twice a week. Amen? Then you should feed your spirit man more than that. Because you know what? Your spirit man is far more important than this body. So what happens is when you renew your mind and all of a sudden you get your mind renewed, all of a sudden this spirit man is getting stronger in the word of God. And now what happens is this spirit man, when this body relies upon memory and in this memory now it's starting to dwell. See this memory, right? This soul man, now grab a hold of him right here. This soul man is your channel for God to come through. This soul man is the channel for the spirit, for the spirit man to hook up with the body because all of a sudden now the body says, I want to drink. All of a sudden now the soul man says, no, -uh, I've learned from the spirit man. We ain't doing that no more. So all of a sudden now, instead of this thing here running the show, we now got the spirit man running the show who is being guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Y'all can have a seat. Thank you so much. Amen. Did everybody got that? <laughs> All right, everybody stay with me now. All right, look with me now in Philippians 2. This is where we left off last time in verse 5 through 7. You there, amen? The Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Now stay with me, because this thing says what I told you last week. It said, let this mind be in you. In other words, let this particular mindset be in you. What mindset? The mindset that Jesus was in the form of God. I'm here to tell you something. Is that not in your Bible? I did not write that in there. It's in there. Amen? Now, this is where the rubber hits the road. This is where a lot of Christians are missing it. You got to understand something. This is the Word of God. You got to believe this over man's doctrine. You got to believe this over the Baptist doctrine, over the Pentecostal doctrine, over the Methodist doctrine, over the Catholic doctrine, whatever man made religion there is, you got to believe this over anybody's doctrine. Because religion wants to tie you to religion, God wants to tie you to Him. God wants an intimate relationship with you, but when you allow religion to dominate you, uh, listen. I remember well, I was educated by a very strong religion. And I remember well the frustration I used to have. Because you know what? I never could measure up. I don't care how hard I tried, everything I did. I don't care how much I prayed, how many Thursday night visitations. How many of y'all remember that? Man, I hated that, but we went. Amen? But you know what? It didn't matter. Whatever I did never was enough. It, you just couldn't quite measure up. But here we're finding out something. Here it's telling us right now, let this mindset be in you. What mindset? That you are a form of God. You are not God. You are a form of God. So understand this, that deep down inside you, if you are born again, if you're not born again, you need to get born again. Because your spirit, man, is wide open to demonic activity. But if you are born again, and here, here it goes, Getting your name on a church road does not make you saved. Amen. Being baptized does not make you saved. Listen, you've got to accept the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You've got to bring it. And just because your mom and daddy are saved don't make you saved. Because your whole family goes to church don't make you saved. You know, this is an intimate thing with God. You've got to accept Christ. You've got to get on the bended knee. You've got to understand. You've got to accept him. And when you accept him, all of a sudden now, his spirit comes within you. But then now it's time for you to educate your spirit man. 
This is what we call, once again, by renewing your mind. And all of a sudden, now we're finding out something. It says right here, it says, it says, let this mind be, in, where? Where should it be? In you. It's important we understand the word of God when we read some of these things. Because when it says in you, it doesn't mean on you. It doesn't mean in your Bible. What good is this if it stays in the Bible? It's got to get inside you. Amen. This is by the renewing of your mind. You know what? I, I remember going into people's houses and, and they'd have the family Bible sitting on the coffee table and, and somebody would sit there drink on it and, and they'd say, oh, don't put your drink on that. That's a family Bible. Well, what good is it doing you if it ain't open? It's, just, it's, it's kind of like a rabbit's foot. It's just there for good luck. You know what? They wasn't very lucky for the rabbit. <laughs> Amen? You got to have the word of God where? 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 So therefore, when you get the word of God in you, you are renewing your mind, and you're getting to the point now. You know what? I remember the time when my body ran the show. I remember the time when I had to have some drugs. I remember the times when I had to used to put a, a needle in my arm. I remember the time when I'd have to drink. I remember the time when I'd have to fight. I remember the time from a violent world that I loved it. I loved being violent. I loved hurting people for money. I enjoyed it. It was a thrill to me. But all of a sudden, it came to me, that blackness and that darkness that I knew I was on my way to hell. There wasn't a thing I could do about it because religion always told me I was never good enough. And then all of a sudden, I found out. That that was man's religion, not God. Don't you understand it was religion that nailed Jesus to a cross? Don't you understand that same? Uh-oh, we're going to get deep here, y'all okay? That same resurrection power that brought Jesus out of the grave dwells within each one of you. That same power. Do you really think God's going to give you part? God's going to give you half? God gave you all. Why would he give you his son if he wasn't going to give it all to you? Inside you lies that resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. That is inside every one of us. Uh-oh, here it comes. Because, listen, y'all remember when you see me marry people? And I bring people together and I say, now, these two spirits have now become one. All right? That's that resurrection power that makes two people become one in God's eyes. That same power is what happens when you accept Christ in your heart. You now become one with the Lord. You Because, see, you are now married to him. You belong to him. And his spirit now dwells within you. That's why it's so easy for us to say, you know what? That we have this, this, let this mindset, the same mindset that Jesus had, we ought to have in us. And the reason why we don't, have it in you got the holy spirit but you don't have the mindset the, the reason why you don't have the mindset because you have been trained by religion that you're some kind of sinner you've been trained by religion that as long as you're in the flesh you're going to sin i'm here to tell you this you sin because you choose to sin you don't have to sin you choose sin and the reason why you choose sin because your spirit, man, is weak, and your body is strong, and you're letting your body run the show. God never intended for your body to run the show. Y'all with me? All right, stay with me now. I'm going to give you some little back scripture where we already have been. So now watch this. You've got to let this mindset be in you. That there's nothing wrong with you being, because you got to, listen, you got to admit this. You got to grab this. I don't care if you're a drunk. I don't care if you're a prostitute. I don't care what you are. You got to know this. If you're washed in the blood of Jesus, you are in the form of God. It, the, does not the Bible say that? Well, as soon as you realize that, you're going to be able to stop some of that mess you're doing. You know what? You think it's easy for Pastor Ron to have done heroin and cocaine and all that mess and all of a sudden just wake up one morning and God touch me and God heal me? Say, okay, it's all over with. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you right now, it was the resurrection power of the living God that delivered me from heroin and cocaine. It was the resurrection power of God that delivered me from a violent world. It was the resurrection power of God that delivered me from out. Listen, people, I ain't got to stand in front of AA and say, I'm Ron Baptiste. I have been 
clean and sober now for three years. Honey, it's been so long since I've had a drink or drugs, I can't even remember how long ago it's been. I know it's been almost 30 years. Hallelujah, amen? If not longer, I don't know. Here's the deal, amen? I ain't got to count. Amen, a thousand times to you, brother. I ain't, got to, I ain't got to go back. I ain't got to get in front of people and make false confessions. You know, I'm Ron Baptiste. I'm one drink away from death. You know, if you won't say that, you just opened up your mouth where the power of life and death is, and you just spoke man's law upon you. How about speaking God's word upon you? I am healed. I am delivered by the word of God. Nothing can touch me. Nothing can harm me. You know what? When I, when I had my motorcycle wreck, they wanted to know if I was addicted to anything because they're about to give me some hard drugs. I said, I ain't addicted to nothing. Give me everything you got. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Matter of fact, I, I remember one time I woke up and they said, uh, uh, Ron, how you feel? I said, like James Brown, I feel good. Because, see, once you've been healed and delivered, this is not magic. This is that resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. You don't have to be afraid of taking anything that the doctor wants to give you. Now, you know what? You've got to be mature, spiritually mature in this. You can't just do this out of a, out of a child's ignorance. You've got to grow in this. Amen? But now, all of a sudden, we've got to realize who we are. You are not the hooker. You're not the whore. You're not the drug. You're not any of these things that the world has labeled you with. You are a child of the living God. You have the mind of Christ. You are a form of the living God. When you realize that, you'll start acting like that. Whew, I'm getting excited. Y'all okay? All right, watch this. He also said, and of his fullness have all we received. And of his fullness. Every, listen, people, this is what covenant means. That's why God called us covenant confirmers. When God spoke that to us, it was an amazing thing because we are to confirm the covenant between God and man. That covenant means this, is that whatever, what, everybody say whatever. Whatever belongs to God belongs to you. Here's the other end of that deal. Whatever belongs to you belongs to God. Some of us have been shortchanging God. We want all, oh, God bless me. God healed me. God delivered me. But God, I ain't doing that. Oh, no, that's not covenant, baby. Covenant is everything that belongs to you belongs to him. And then you have that right to call upon anything that belongs to him also belongs to you. And when your spirit man grows in that and you understand, see, you don't reach God by emotions. I, listen, I, I, when I was an evangelist, I have preached in some churches, man. I saw some unreal stuff. I saw people getting down on all fours and barking like dogs. I, I have seen some unreal stuff. And you know what? And be, people all of a sudden, you know, say, well, you know what? If I didn't get excited and I didn't get a Holy Ghost jerk and I didn't get a Holy Ghost boot goose month, I didn't have church. Because you're basing it on your flesh. You reach God through his word. You don't reach God through your flesh. You reach God through his word. The more of the word of God you know, the closer you get to God. And it's just not knowing, it's doing. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Amen? Stay with me now. Watch this. And It says right here also, and as he is, everybody say, so are we. As he is, as he is, so are we. as he is, so are we. isn't that in your Bible? Yes. And it also says in this world. So we got to see, you got to grasp the truth of the word of God. This is why religion don't want you to know this stuff. Because religion wants to have a dominance over you. Religion wants to grab you. Religion wants to control you. Religion wants you to come to them if you want to go to God. Listen, you got the Holy Spirit. You got Jesus himself. You don't need beads. You don't need to go find a, a, in a little room. and conf All you need is a Holy Spirit. Amen? That's all you need. And you got the Word of God. We, yeah, I thank God I don't have to go through a high priest. 
I thank God I ain't got to go through another man. I just fall on my face, and I'm in the presence of God. That's all that it takes. Amen? So we know this right now. He says also, God said, I will put my spirit within you. Where? God's spirit is not lacking. This is God's word. God says, I will put my spirit in you. So you know what? This is what I, I'm going to keep preaching this. You're going to get this, baby. Amen? God, if you are truly born again, you have the fullness of God inside you. And the devil don't want you to know it. Religion don't want you to know it. The world system don't want you to know it because they want you beat down, pressed down. They want you exactly where they can control you to where you've got to be tied to the world system. That when the market crashes, you crash. I got a flash where I don't care what the market does, we're going to be all right. Amen? Amen? Stay with me now. I'm, I'm almost caught up here. And then Jesus said, I will give you power. Power over the end. What are you afraid of the devil for? How come we get shook when, when, when the devil comes around? How come that's, we let stuff like that bother us? Amen? Because Jesus said, I give you, you know, the, all this is in your spirit, man. If you're born again, all of the fullness of God is there. Everything is there for you. You just got to tap into it. And this is not like some locker room slogan. You can't just confess it, honey. You got to live it. You got to live it. And when you do, all of a sudden, you're going to find these things to be true. That he says, I give you power. That word power in the Greek means authority. And now, guess what? You get to tell the devil what to do. I don't know about you, but he told me what to do for too many years. You know, it's payback time now, honey. Amen? That's why I love it when I lead some of these bikers to Christ. That's how come I love it when I reach these people who nobody else can reach. And all of a sudden, the devil's got all this time invested in them, all this stuff invested in them. And all of a sudden, along come Pastor Ron. Amen? And we lead these guys to Jesus. We lead these women to Jesus. And all of a sudden, we just snatch them right out of hell just like that. Because all of a sudden, they like us have been told they're no good. They like us have been told by religion, you won't feel comfortable in this church. You need to go down there to that other church. You know what? If there's a church anywhere that won't accept any person of God, they are not a church of the living God. Amen. They're a church of religion and denomination. Uh-oh, don't, don't make me turn to Revelations and preach to you about the big whore. Because that's exactly what the big whore is talking about, is the organized church that comes against the word of God. Ooh, I better stop with that. Y'all okay with me? Okay, go with me now real quick to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. The Bible also tells us that we're sealed into the day of redemption. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Okay, okay. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Thank you. Y'all getting this? Confess this, confess this with me. Say, I, I am, am getting this. Getting it. All right, all right, all right. Watch this with me now. Here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. You ready for some more revelation knowledge? Here we go. Watch this. You there, amen? amen. You're not? Say, hang on. I want you to see it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Here, here, okay, got it. Here, here, here we go. But he that is joined unto the Lord is what? But he that is joined to the Lord is what? If you're born again, that means you are joined to the Lord. You are joined with him. Catch this now. You are one spirit with him. Is Jesus broke? Is Jesus sick? Is Jesus lacking? Is Jesus in depression? Because you aren't either if you'll tap into this. And when you tap into this, you're going to understand what this is the way God always intended for his people to live. He never intended for us to be addicted to anything. He never intended for us to be depressed. He never intended for any of these things that come upon us. That's the one thing God told me that morning he visited me in my living room. And I'm sitting there, been drunk for three or four days, and i would just been in a serious fight, and I'm injured, and I'm sitting there drinking beer watching Dr. Charles Stanley. How about that? 
You'd be surprised how many drunks watch Charles Stanley on Sunday morning. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and I never will forget that morning I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the floor, got my Budweiser sitting right there watching Dr. Charles Stanley, and I know that I got more beer in the refrigerator. I got my whiskey out there in the refrigerator in my waste race car shop. I got my drugs out there because my deal was I started drinking beer in the morning. About noon, I switch over to whiskey. And about in the afternoon, I start running something up in my arm. That was my lifestyle for many, many years. And I'm sitting there that morning. Dr. Stanley just went off. And I turn the TV off. And I'm sitting there drinking. Yeah, God talks to drunks. And God will speak to you while you're drinking. Because God's not too good to visit you. Then why should we think we're too good to visit anybody else? That's religion. That's why we, oh, you got to clean up before you come in our house, brother. Oh, man, you go, oh, don't get me off on that. I, I never forget that morning I sat there. God spoke to me. God spoke to me as clear as I'm speaking to you. And you know what? Jesus Christ came into my room. And I know somebody's saying, you mean he literally, listen, you believe what you want to believe. I know what happened. Matter of fact, I don't care if you don't believe it or not. Because it worked. And Christ spoke to me that morning. Because things were just going down the tube. Everything in my life, I was running off everybody that ever loved me. And I'm sitting there drinking that beer. And, and I, I got the TV turned off. And Christ came into my room. And he didn't stand up and judge me. I was sitting in the floor. And he sat right down in the floor across from me. And he point blank said to me, he said, Ronnie, I never intended for your life to turn out like this. Because I was kind of mad at him. I said, of all the times, all the injuries, all the war wounds that I've received, everything I've ever been through, why don't you just take me out? I'm not the only one in here that's ever felt like that. God, just take me out of here. I'm no good to anybody. I'm no good to you. I, the only thing I ever do is harm the people that love me. God, just... just Get rid of, just take me out. And I couldn't commit suicide because my mother had committed suicide. My mother had shot herself with her with my pistol when I was still a teenager. And I lived with that for most of my life. So I couldn't kill myself, but I sure tried to put myself in positions where others would kill me. But I just ended up in hospitals, being in emergency rooms, being hurt, having death pronounced on me, and God would not let me die. I'm going to tell you what, the reason he didn't let me die, because he loves each and every one of you. Because he knew that some of you needed somebody just like you to preach to you the gospel of the living Jesus Christ. And that's what it's all about, people. It's all about the love of God. And I'm here to tell you who you are. I can't preach to you like this unless I tap into my spirit, man. I'm not that intelligent. But through my spirit, man, I can do all things. Through. Why do you think that scripture is in there? That scripture is not in there as a slogan. When that scripture is in, in God's word, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know what? It's because you've got to learn how to tap into your spirit, man. Not your soul, man. Not your body. You've got to educate your spirit, man. When you educate your spirit, man, you tap into something. And when you tap into it, that's where the power of God is. That's why Jesus said that when I go away, you'll do the things that I've done and even greater. Because we have the same spirit. We are one with him. If you are joined with him, you are one with him. And the Bible is extremely clear about that. Amen? All right, stay with me. Watch this now. Because we've got to watch this process that we go through. I'm about to run out of time. Watch this with me. The process that we all go through is, number one, we've got to get saved. When you get saved, your spirit gets the Holy Spirit. Number two, you've got to start renewing your mind. See, too many times religion tells us you just get saved. Just walk this aisle, accept Christ, let us put your name on a, on a church row, let us baptize you, and that's okay, that's good. No, honey, that's just the start of it. You got to renew your mind. Because you know what? Too many times people that do get saved, all of a sudden they feel like, well, I got saved today and I'm never going to drink again, I'm never going to fornicate again, I, I'm never going to do drugs again, I'm so excited to be saved. And within 24 hours, man, they're tempted by the same old stuff. Why is that? Because your mind's not renewed. Your mind, you've got to renew your mind. 
That's where your soul man is. And when you renew your mind, all of a sudden your spirit man starts to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And then comes that wonderful day like I experienced where you can turn around and you can tell the drugs, uh-uh, no more. You can tell the alcohol, I'm done with you. I'm talking about wine. I'm talking about all of it. I don't even need any alcohol in a cough syrup. Hallelujah. I don't need any of that stuff. Why is that? I'm not afraid of it. I don't try to run from it. I'm delivered from it. My body is whole. My body is clean. All the diseases that try to come upon me from being a needle user are gone. Hallelujah. My blood is clean. My liver is pure. My heart beats strong because of what the power of the resurrection is inside my spirit, man. And that's what we got to tap into. Is everybody still okay with me? Watch this now. Okay. And then the third thing we got to do, you got to release from your spirit, man, what God has deposited in you. Listen, God has already given you everything you need. Healing is already inside you. Prosperity is already inside you. Peace of mind is already there. The joy of the Lord is there. Wholeness, completeness, everything you've ever dreamed about, God has already instilled inside you. It's there. Amen. And you got to bring it out. And that's what your job is, is to educate your spirit, man, so you know these things that you now possess. You know, we talk about, you know, well, well, well Lord, just, just heal me. Well, you know what the Bible says? Watch this. By his stripes we what? The word says were. If I'm not mistaken, were is past tense. So what's up with these bonehead preachers? Who, you know, when they come to, to pray for you for your healing, they say, well, Lord, let it be unto him according to his faith. Well, Lord, if it be thy will. Biggest bunch of, I better not say that either in the pulpit. Because they don't know the word of God. It is God's will that you be healed. It's from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It is God's will that you have peace. It is God's will that you have joy. It is God's will that you never lack in anything. That is God's will. And we got to learn how to tap into this because it's all there. Everything you ever need is right there for you. And we have to learn this. We turn around and we say, well, God... Lord, if you just bless me. Well, you got to read God's word. God's already blessed you. Blessing means empowered to prosper. Amen. That's not talking about just finances. It's every part of your being, every part of your body, everything that you need. He says, I have blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. How much more can you ask for? If God's word tells us he has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, that means that everything that is in heaven, God has already blessed you with. It's there. It's inside you. Listen, if you're struggling with some kind of disease, some kind of addiction, if whatever it is you're struggling with, I'm here to tell you a flash that you don't realize your healing, your deliverance is already there. All you got to do is learn this. And you got to believe what God is saying. And you know what? You got to put it into practice and use this thing. Okay, let, let's move on. I'm, I'm almost out of time. All right, stay with me now. Religion has taught you to beg. You ever heard them prayers? Oh, Lord, if you just come by and pay us a visit. Lord, if you just come by, stop by us lowly sinners. Oh, Lord, we don't deserve it, my Father. What do you mean you don't deserve it? You, you know, you're washed in the blood of Jesus. What, what are you telling me? That's not good enough for you? If you're washed in the blood of listen. Oh, boy, here it comes. The Bible tells us that we are seated in heavenly places. The Bible tells us that we are seated with Christ. We, we're, listen, people. We are sitting in the same seat that Jesus is sitting in. And the Bible says Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father. How close can you get to God? You're there. And being seated is a position of authority. Come on now. When you go, when, when you go to court, that judge is not standing on top of that bench, is he? He's sitting down, isn't he? 
It's a position of authority. And when you realize you ain't got to beg God, you, you ain't, you ain't got to have this false humility, well, Lord, I don't deserve it. Oh, Father, I don't deserve your... Oh, shut up. Oh, I better watch it. Be nice, Pastor Ron. Be nice. Okay, okay. Is everybody okay? Okay, here, 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 here we go now. We got to stay, stay with this. The spirit believes the word of God. The body believes its five senses. And the soul believes its memory. This is how come we have to renew our mind with the word of God. All right, now go with me real quick to Romans 8. We're going to wind this one up right here. Romans 8. Can y'all digest everything I've given you? Romans chapter 8. Ooh, we are going to get into something here. That'd be all right. Amen. Romans chapter 8, you there? Amen. You're not to hang on. Good, 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 good. Okay, watch this now. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1, watch this. There is therefore now. Everybody say now. now. Everybody say right now. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are where? Where? Not on in. See, when you get saved, you're in. Religion puts you on. Intimate relationship with God puts you in. You're seated in heavenly places, not on heavenly places. God said, I give you my spirit. I give you my fullness in Christ Jesus. Amen? All right, stay with me. Stay with me. Here we, here, here we go. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, that's the body, but after the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life. Now, you're going to see a couple of laws right here. And I'm going to try to explain them to you if i got time. If I don't, I'll pick it up next week. Here's the first law. The law of the Spirit of life. Now, watch this. For the law of the spirit of life, where is it? In Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now you got to grasp this. It has made you what? Free. From the law, here's another law, of sin and death. You don't have to sin, you just want to. Well, you know, preacher, I can't help it. You know what? You might convince your mama of that. You might convince your daddy of that. You might convince your husband or your wife and your children of that. But you ain't convincing me of that because you choose that. Well, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. Don't give me that mess. I've been further down that ditch than you have. And it's a choice. You choose the avenue that you walk into. It's a, don't, uh oh I'm busting somebody's bubble here. I know I am. I know. Getting rid of all excuses. Well, you know, honey, I just can't help myself. Yes, you can. Amen. You just don't want to bad enough. Oh, boy, that hurts. Everybody still okay with me? All right, all right, all right, all right. Hang on. What, what, where was that? What verse was I in there? Two. Good, 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 good. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. We're, listen, we got a choice here. We're free from this mess. Stay with me, stay with me. Verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through what? The body. The body can't do anything. The body trusts its own five senses. If I'm hungry, I want to be fed. If I'm thirsty, I want to drink. And that's what's wrong with us. We let our body run the show. Okay. This is, oh, oh, oh. this is what fasting is all about. When you got the body, you got the soul, and you got the spirit, and the spirit managed to run the show, but yet when the body takes over, here it comes, people. Some people have mistaken fasting for this glorious time, and all of a sudden, you know what? You're going to hear angels singing out of heaven. No, you're starving yourself. 
fasting, now you catch this, fasting is your spirit man and your soul telling the body you are not in charge. Fasting is telling the body you do not run this show. You got to have food. You got to have water. But the soul and the spirit do not. So therefore, we fast. See, some people want to fast so they think they get closer to God. Well, you know, I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but sometimes we go into fasting over the wrong reason. Jesus taught us that when we fast, we don't go around here telling everybody, I'm fasting. Look in my eyes. See how bad my eyes look? <laughs> I'm suffering for Jesus. Me and the Lord. No, 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 honey. Oh, no. You, the only thing you're doing is losing weight and doing it the wrong way. Fasting is when you put the body in check and you tell the body you are no longer in charge. I am in charge. Who is I? That's your spirit. That's who the real you is. This is not who you are. Your memory is not who you are. Your spirit, man, is who you are. And I'm here to tell you something. You are a pretty good person because you are in the fullness of God. You are in the form of God. God has given you his spirit. God has given you his blessings. God's given you power. God's given you all this. So you know what? That's why the Bible calls us kings and priests. Because God's trying to relate to us who we are. This is who God intended for us to be. Stand up with me. Stand up with me. Ooh-wee. Everybody okay?